This is Euston Station, eerily empty at rush hour on a Friday afternoon. The UK has been in lockdown since mid-March due to the global coronavirus pandemic. This has left the country looking and feeling like a very different place. Masks are now necessary in shops and on trains. It's almost impossible to miss the reminders. The public are encouraged to socially distance and to follow COVID-19 infrastructure designed to keep us all two metres away from each other at all times. Today, I am joined by Anthony, a father, a husband and an employee who is sharing with us his personal experience being locked down at home. This is Life in Lockdown. Welcome, Anthony. Uh, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. So let's just get right into it, shall we? Yes, please. Okay, so what was it like being locked down at home with a young child? Okay, well, Stephen's eight, but he's a very independent boy. He is very good at finding things to do, not just playing on his uh, video games, but he's, uh, he's done a lot of drawing. He's done two folders full of drawings from uh, Pokemon and um, How to Train Your Dragon books and uh, on the face of it he's managed well but uh, as the lockdown has uh, stretched out he's done a few things which were a bit out of character for him. Uh, one night he took some scissors and started chopping bits off his hair. Uh, not a great amount but that was a bit unusual and uh, another time he put a metal ball bearing in his mouth and swallowed it and I had to take him up to A&E. So that was all a little bit uh, unusual. Um, I was initially against um, returning children to school in September when it was announced months ago because I felt as if the government were using uh, parents and children as guinea pigs. But as we've learned more about the way coronavirus affects younger people and for his, I think, peace of mind, uh, sort of mental uh, stability, I'm happy for him to uh, to go back to school in September, as I think it, in the long run there's more benefits for him uh, mentally than uh, physical risk. What significant differences have you noticed compared to life before lockdown? Well, my situation is a bit funny because I had an operation on my right hand in September last year, and um, I was on my own kind of lockdown because I couldn't drive couldn't really uh, leave the house, couldn't use that hand at all. And it wasn't till January that the dressings came off and I was just starting to emerge from my own medical lockdown uh, when we got into March and uh, th there was the nationwide lockdown. It's, I don't, I've been working from home for years, so that didn't make a difference. And I'm not a great one for going out, pubs and, and things like that. Occasional trip to the cinema. The, main thing I'm missing, I think, is uh, being able to wander around books, bookstores. Okay. Um, so that's in terms of uh, going out and about. And obviously, being in lockdown carries with it uh, a number of other considerations. Uh, for example, before lockdown, if you ran out of uh, sugar or bread or beer, you'd just nip up the road to the local corner shop and get some. Whereas now, um, every trip out it increases your your risk of catching something so we, we only tend to go out uh, sparingly and then when we go out we do as much as we can when we're out wearing our masks so I might go out once uh, a week to pick up bread or milk or any essentials but there's not this just nipping out and getting things when you feel like it if you accept that every time you're out you're uh, in theory, increasing your risk of uh, collecting, picking something up. Yeah. Well, did you take any immediate actions when the lockdown started? Well, I saw, I saw the lockdown coming. Um, I did uh, discuss it with uh, Eki, my wife, as to whether we should start stockpiling, uh, particularly when they're doing it in Australia, who are about three weeks uh, ahead of us. But I didn't actually do anything food-wise because I was kind of hoping it wouldn't happen. But I did realise that the important thing to have would be medication to control fever and so on. So I made sure I got plenty of a uh, cowpole for Stephen, paracetamol, and ibuprofen, and cough mixture for the rest of us. So I did uh, stock up uh, on that beforehand. And then when 
the lockdown occurred and there was all the panic buying we didn't really suffer we managed to get by um, I did um, we did a, decide to buy an extra freezer um, but all the, the, the cheap ones which start about 200 250 quid had gone and I ended up yep. spending over 400 quid just to get one <laughs> but it's been it was a good call because yep. we've been able to have the comfort of knowing we've got a bit of a fallback in terms of uh, food in the freezer. Okay. Have you found that you've gone online with your shopping to limit your exposure physically then? Well, I do most of my shopping online, not food-wise. And We looked at going uh, online food-wise, but as you know, the delivery dates were sort of six and eight weeks hence, so that was a, a waste of time. Um, Eki works for HMRC, so she's an essential worker which means she can get into Morrison's early before everyone else. So the routine is she gets to Morrison's at six o'clock on a Thursday and goes in and does like the week shop. And there's, there's hardly anyone in there. And so she's wearing a mask. She's got hand disinfectant. So that's, we've been doing that uh, since March and uh, that's worked quite well, apart from getting up at six o'clock in the morning, of course. That's cool. Well, earlier on you were mentioning that uh your daughter has been doing a lot of baking lockdown started yeah have any other positives if any arisen out of this lockdown uh, well for me personally I've uh, I've started practicing uh, yoga because uh, I was getting full of aches and pains and uh, I'm not a very active person although I'd like to go out walking and um, I discovered uh, some online yoga sessions which I started in March and I uh, I started a beginner's 30-day session and um, now it's it's become a little bit like a drug in that if I don't have at least uh, one session I don't feel quite right and my flexibility and aches and pains have all improved uh, greatly. So th that's one positive. Would you say that you felt supported during the lockdown, either by family and friends or by the government? Um, Fa Family-wise, uh, yes, but I think uh, everyone's getting a little bit bored with it now and there's a, a tendency for complacency because a lot of people, us included, don't really know anyone who's actually had this uh, disease uh, because even though the numbers are high, in terms of the actual population, uh, they're a small percentage and so people, I think, it's easy to take your eye off the ball and I think you've seen in recent behaviour as lockdowns has uh, been eased, people have been going a bit too far and the infection rates have started to increase. Um, in terms of the government, um, their action has been a, a, a complete and utter disappointment. They don't appear to have any strategy at all and the incompetence and inefficiency and waste of money and people's lives lost it has been scandalous and I can't um, I can't I find it hard to understand how they've got away with it you know I come from the generation that remembers John Profumo defense minister who lied to parliament as soon as that came out who was disgraced and had to resign Richard Nixon lied had to resign the Guardian refers to Boris Johnson as a liar in its articles and in its, in its, its leader. And the only reason they can get away with that is he can't do anything legally because a defence to a charge of defamation is that what you're saying is true. And he's been caught out so many times. Uh, it makes, you know, it's very worrying as we're heading into uh, autumn and the winter. I think we're just going to have a repeat of all the inefficiencies and incompetence that, that we've had before. Do you feel like we are waiting on a second wave of coronavirus? Um, I think it's, in, well, some people say the it's still part of the, um, the first wave in that the first wave subsided when there was strict lockdown, but there was still enough around once people started mixing again. But I certainly feel, and you can see it already, Birmingham is on the edge of lockdown at the moment. And I certainly do expect uh, local lockdowns to increase until you get to the point where there's so many that a, a national lockdown will be announced. And I think there'll be a lot of uh, resistance from the general public, 
um, who will feel as if uh, in some way they're being blamed by the government. You know, even now the, uh, the government is blaming people for spreading the virus. Uh, the shift I came for when the, uh, the, the advice was stay at home, which was quite clear in one thing, to stay alert. Stay alert suddenly pushed the emphasis on the general public and their behaviour. And if we're not behaving properly, it's our fault the virus is spreading and takes attention off all the inefficiencies, lack of planning, lack of uh, test trace, isolate uh, procedures lack of PPE, takes attention off the government. So I think it's a very subtle shift in emphasis there. I think that's very interesting. Well, uh, thank you for your time, Tony. That's fine. Um, oh, it's been a pleasure, John. It has been a pleasure. And I hope you uh, get yourself safe throughout the rest of this lockdown coronavirus climate. Yes, and you look after yourself, John. All the best. All right.